Hey, what's going on? All right, so we've got four main power sources in our golf swing. And the first one's gonna be rotary power. And it's obviously our ability to rotate our hips and our thoracic spine. The second is chop power. And that's our shoulders and our arms. The third is vertical thrust. That's our, obviously our legs and our ability to create ground reaction forces. And the fourth, which is often forgotten about, is our wrist power. So our ability to hinge, flex, extend our wrist is what determines how well we transfer that power that we've created from the ground through our body and onto the club. So I'm gonna show you five wrist mobility exercises that'll help you create a better wrist hinge and transfer that power onto the ball. All right, so whether or not you call this wrist hinge or this wrist hinge, I'm gonna show you mobility and strengthening exercises for each one of those movements. So to clarify, this is going to be wrist flexion, wrist extension, radial deviate, ulnar deviate. So now depending upon where you are in your swing, your wrist will go through all four of those motions. Now for the most part, your lead wrist is going to be in flexion and your trail wrist will be in extension. The radial deviation at the top here in your trail wrist, ulnar deviation as you come into contact. They're just a very general statement of how your wrist will move throughout your golf swing. All right, so the first exercise is going to be a wrist car or controlled articular rotation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on just creating that range of motion within our wrist. So all I want you to do is sit up tall, arm by your side, 90 degrees, uh, hands supinated, so palm up, fingers together, fingers extended, so nice long hand. And all you're going to do is you're going to move your wrist inward, which is ulnar deviation, and then we're going to circle around up into flexion, all while maintaining that flat, straight hand out to the side or radial deviation and down into extension and around. Again, real slowly trying to fight through the range of motion, trying to create, make that, make that circle a little bit bigger each time around. And then we'll go the other direction. So radial deviate, flexion, ulnar deviation, and extension. This whole time you want to kind of pretend that you've got a glass of water here. So you want to keep your forearm in this position the entire time. Really just focus on creating as much range of motion as possible in that wrist. All right, so the second exercise is going to be a radial deviation isometric exercise. And I'm going to use a golf club. If you've got a hammer, baseball bat, um, a, a dumbbell will work. And all we're going to do is sit tall, 90 degrees, arms down by your side, scap retracted so that your shoulder is stable. And the further I hold the club or bat or hammer away from the head, the more difficult this exercise will be. So this will be the most difficult. This will be easier in this position. So I'm just going to have this down by my side and we're going to radial deviate or bend our wrist forward or upward. And we're just going to hold this position for 20 to 30 seconds in this isometric contraction. This whole time I want my arms straight, elbow locked, just focusing on this radial deviation. And we'll relax and we'll do five reps on each wrist. The third exercise, almost identical, we're just kind of gonna give it a 180. So this will be ulnar deviation isometric exercise. Now I'm gonna have the club head pointed backwards Again, sitting tall, arm down my side, scap retracted, shoulder tight. And all I wanna do here is now I'm going to rotate my wrist back or down into ulnar deviation. 
Again, with this now, I should feel my, my tricep engaged. And we're just focusing on that deviation. Keep that elbow locked. And again, we're holding for 20 to 30 seconds. And then resting. And we'll do five reps on both wrists. Okay, wrist mobility exercise number four is going to be wrist flexion isometric exercise. So I'm gonna use a bench, you could use a table. Uh, I'm gonna sit here with my forearm on the bench with my wrist kind of hanging over the, over the edge, 90 degrees here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna show you manual resistance, I'm gonna show you in both end ranges. So first I'm gonna let my wrist fall here so it actually goes into extension. I'm gonna place my other hand on the palm and I'm going to use this hand as resistance as I flex up. So again, it's an isometric contraction, so the wrist actually isn't going to move. I'm going to equal the resistance of me flexing my hand up with the resistance of my other hand on the palm. So I'm going to try and flex up, meet that resistance and an isometric contraction for five seconds and then relax. Now you should be able to notice that you can create a little bit more range of motion there. So I'll go to end range as far as I can extend. Now again, flex. And relax. And we'll perform five reps of that and then switch wrists. Then we'll work into the other end range. So now I'll bring my wrist all the way up into flexion. And again, I'm gonna use my other hand as resistance as I fight to pull my wrist into more flexion. Use that as resistance for five seconds. Then relax. Bring the wrist up as far as you can again. Again, fight to hold that. Relax, and again, we'll perform five reps on each side. Okay, the last exercise is going to be the wrist extension isometric exercise. So just like the flexion, although now we're going to turn our forearm and our hand over, or pronate, and for this, I'm going to show you a different variation. I mean, this could obviously also be done in the flexion exercise by holding here, but we're gonna, I'm gonna use a band. You can also use a small dumbbell Forearm's gonna be in the same position, but now it's pronated. And all we're going to do is extend our wrist up and we're gonna hold this position for 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, there shouldn't be a lot of tension in the shoulder. It should all come from the wrist here and extending as far as you can and holding. And then again, like the flexion exercise,